Hello everyone and welcome to part 6, while loops. So let's learn a bit about while loops in JavaScript. And loops in general allow us to automatically repeat blocks of code. And the while loop will continually execute code as long as the condition remains true. And like I mentioned for the previous lecture, if you're already familiar with while loops from another programming language, you may just want to check the notes for this lecture and just reference the syntax changes yourself. Okay. In case you're new to a while loop, let's see what it actually looks like. So in JavaScript, the while loop looks like this. You say the keyword while, and then in parentheses, you have some sort of condition. And then inside the curly brackets, you execute some code, and that code is going to be continually executed while that condition is true. And something to be careful with while loops is if you have a condition that will always remain true no matter what, then that while loop will execute forever. And that may lead to buggy code because your while loop just never breaks, it always stays running forever. Okay, let's see some actual examples, and we're also going to learn about a few keywords, such as the break keyword, which will break out of a top-level block of code. Let's jump to our editor to get started. Okay, so just like last time, I have an HTML script that's connected to my JavaScript, this myscript.js, and that, in turn, has the HTML connected to this browser. So let's get started with a very simple while loop example. I'm going to create a variable called x and set it equal to zero. And then I can begin typing while, hit enter, and Adam helps me out with the rest of the context. So I say while x is less than five. That's the condition I want. I'm going to perform some action. I will log x is currently and then I'm going to say plus x here, so that prints out. And then I'm also going to log x is still less than 5, adding 1 to x. And then finally, to make sure this doesn't run forever, I'm going to say x is equal to x plus 1. So before we run this, let's break down what's actually happening here. I start off with x equals zero. This is outside this while loop. Then inside this while loop, I'll say, while x is less than five, I want you to execute this block of code. And the first block of code, or the first line of code on line four says, just x is currently, and then whatever the current number of x is. And then, as long as x is still less than five, my condition, I'll also log x is still less than five, adding one to x. And then finally, on line 7, I'll say x is equal to x plus 1. So I reassign x to the current x plus 1. And I'll also show you later on some syntax to have a shortcut of doing this sort of operation. But let's save that. And now let's run our browser, or refresh our browser page here, and see what we get. So we get a lot of output. Let's expand this and see what's happening here. So I get x is currently 0. That makes sense. So it's still less than 5. I add 1 to x x is currently 1, and this keeps going all the way until it prints out x is currently 4, which makes sense. If x is currently 4, I would log x is still less than 5, adding 1 to x. And note that once I add 1 to x, then x becomes 5, and 5 is no longer less than 5. It's equal to 5. So the while loop stops operating, which is why we never see x is currently 5. And that's the very basics of how a while loop works. Okay. Now let's add in some manual break conditions, which will exit out of the loop. And it's going to use the keyword break. So right now I'm going to start with variable x is equal to zero. I'll say while x is less than five, and I'm going to console again log x is currently x. And then here I'm going to add in some control flow with an if statement. And I will say if x is equal to 3, I'm going to log x is equal to 3. And that's all I'll do for now. So let's run this code again and see what happens. So it looks like very much the same code, 0, 1, 2, 3, except when x is currently 3, before I say x is less than 5, I get this big announcement, x is equal to 3. Now let's actually try to break the while loop on this certain condition. And the way we can do that is by adding in the special keyword break. And this will break out of the top level loop it's in. Basically what, says, what this is saying is if x is equal to 3, 
log this and then break out of the top level loop you find this keyword in. And that happens to be this while loop. So let's save this, expand this, and refresh the page. And now we see when I refresh, it stops at this S, x is equal to three line. So it says x is equal to three, and then it breaks out of that while loop. And that's how we can use the keyword break to essentially prematurely break out of a while loop so that we don't have to wait until this condition is naturally meant to be false. And that's really all there is to the while loop. We'll use it later on in the course, but as a quick exercise, I want you to do this. Write a while loop that prints out only the even numbers from one to 10. So again, just to clarify what I want you to do right now, I'll write it in here as a comment. Write a while loop that prints out only the even numbers from one to 10. Okay, so pause the video, see if you can do it on your own, and then I'm going to write out the solution for this question. Just write a while loop that prints out only the even numbers from one to 10. Okay, so let's get started with this. I'm going to clear everything I have here in my editor. Hopefully you were able to actually do this yourself, or at least attempt it yourself, but everything's clear, so let's try it out. Okay, so let's see how we can attempt to solve this problem. First thing I'm going to do is create a variable called num and start it off equal to one. Then I'm going to create my while loop and I wanna go from numbers one to 10. So I will say, while my number is less than 11, and let's just start off with a very simple example. I will log the number and then say num is equal to num plus one. Save this and let's see if this works. Refresh the page. And here I get all the numbers from one to 10. But the assignment is to only print out these even numbers. So I need some sort of method to check if a number is even. And hopefully you remember from the number or the very basics of JavaScript lecture, that very first JavaScript lecture, we taught you the mod operator. So I'm going to say if num mod two is equal to zero, then I can do something and I know that the number is even. So I will log that number. So what does that actually mean? Well, remember that mod checks for a remainder. And I know if a number divided by two leaves a remainder equal to zero, then that number is even. So six divided by two has no remainder, eight divided by two has no remainder, etc. Okay, and then lastly, I wanna make sure this doesn't run forever. So outside of that if, I'm going to say num is equal to num plus one. So let's save that and see if I refresh the page, it works. And there we have it, two, four, six, eight, 10. And those are all the even numbers from one to 10 using a while loop. Take your time if this was a little confusing for you. And some key things to remember here is this mod operator. This is a really common way to check if a number is even. And also key to this is to remember to increase the number and to remember to increase the number outside of this if statement. If you only had it inside of this if statement, that would cause problems because you would only be adding one if the number was even. You wouldn't do it on the odd numbers. And you can tell if something is within the block using these curly brackets as indicators. And indentation for JavaScript doesn't matter a whole lot, although you should try to keep your code readable and clean. Later on when we talk about Python, indentation is going to be a huge aspect of it. Okay, so thanks everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture where we're going to begin to discuss for loops. I'll see you there.